All right, so this video is for my good friend Joshua Winslow. Uh, he's just not getting started in the sport of field target. He's very excited about it. It kind of brings back some memories when I first started, how excited I was and uh, used to sleep and dream about field target. And it was cool to go to the matches and see everybody's equipment and uh, try to gain as much knowledge about it as I possibly could. A uh, lot of wonderful people. You're going to meet a lot of nice guys in field target. But uh, right now I want to talk about a little bit of equipment that you're going to run into. Um, I promised him a video of uh, what I used to do and what I would probably do now if I were to go back to hunter class. I currently shoot open class. So anyway, you've all seen the targets. This is going to be pretty similar to what you're going to see at all the field target matches. Just This is a store-bought uh, gamo squirrel. Alright, so... You've probably already seen this, but when you hit the, the paddle through the hole, it's going to knock it down. That's called a hit. If you hit the front of the target anywhere out here, and the target does not fall down, and it, it won't, that is a miss. There are no points for almost. So anyway, that's the targets you're going to be shooting at, relatively the same targets. And when I first started hunter class, I was taught to use knee pads to give me a little elevation with my elbows. Now everybody uses these. Um, the guy that uh, taught me to use them and how to use them and when to use them uh, was a, a, a really good shooter. We're not gonna talk about his name, but you're gonna hear it at matches and the guy hasn't been in field target now for a couple of years for sure. But you're gonna hear his name. <laughs> he's, he's infamous. All right, now I got the bucket. This is uh, my bucket. This is something I derived from uh, the man we won't speak of. He didn't have one like this, but he had one that was set up similar to this and it done the same function. I actually took two buckets and cut them in half, put one bucket inside the other bucket. You can see the, the cutout right here. And I put these little bolts on the side of it, right? So go in here, go in here. This is so my bucket will tilt right the ground is never going to be level that's part of the course is to set things up where it's uncomfortable for right-handed shooters or left-handed shooters and i made this bucket and i tilted the top of it and tightened the screws down i can adjust it with this bolt in the front and tilt it either way i want i keep mine offset on level so if i turn the bucket now it's pointed uphill if i turn around this way like this now it's pointed downhill if the ground slopes, I can rotate my bucket any which way I want, and I still have a nice level seat to sit on. And you're going to find out that sitting on something that's relatively flat to the bottom of your butt or back of your legs, it's going to it's going to help stability out a lot. So I made this one myself. It is a low bucket. I don't want a tall bucket. I want to be able to get my my rear end low and my knees high so that I'm more comfortable to hold the gun. Now we move on to the bipod in hunter class. You're gonna see lots of uh, bipods. This was uh, Alex's bipod. We made after I made mine. His is a little bit lighter than mine and newer, so it was a little bit more rigid. And this is my actual first bipod I made. I didn't want to buy one because I didn't know if I'd even like shooting field target. I always followed the sport, always thought it was really neat, but I just never really wanted to do it until uh, recently. It, uh, the expense is, you know, incredible for a poor guy like me. So I went to a thrift store and I found a tripod for a camera. And as for the rules, it's supposed to be a bipod, not a tripod, so I removed one leg. This has a lot of elevation to it. It'll stand up, sit down, low, high, low as you want to go. And I made this little piece to cradle my gun right here out of a piece of PVC pipe, black poly pipe, like a drain pipe. Found a, a piece of padding to glue in it, kind of like a mouse pad, glued that in. And it's pretty good, but if you push on it, the legs will fail sometimes. If you got a lot of weight on them, the legs will slip, right? So it's, it's a good beginner thing, but you're going to want to upgrade if you're going to get into it to something like a bog pod. If I like a bog pod, they work really well. You'll notice that leg won't move without this leg, right? They're geared 
in the center right in here. I like that. They twist to slide out and lock. So if you're on une uneven ground, you can extend one leg and get yourself leveled up nice, right? So anyway, that's a pretty good bog pod. Uh, fits PCPs really good. If I were gonna use this and go to a Springer class, which I know that's what you're gonna do, Joshua, I would go get a rear rest, a sandbag, something like this or whatever you want cut this off and I would fashion something flat to this to put my my sandbag on and that would be my platform for my springer so we've covered a lot of the basic stuff that you're going to use um I want to show you this if I was to go back to hunter class this would be my seat not a bucket and I'll show you later how I would use that um I've only seen a couple of people doing it but I shoot my hunter class uh, PCP pistol from that seat with a bipod and uh, it's worked out really well for me anyway let's get on to the rest of the video all right so I got my bucket I was showing you how it's, it's tilted so if I turn it this way it makes me lean way forward if I turn it this way it makes me lean that way I get it set, my ground's on level, so I'm gonna put the high side up here. So when I sit on it, it's pretty flat. I got my homemade knee pads. I got uh, made it uh, from store-bought stuff at Lowe's or Home Depot, one of the box stores. And uh, there's a limit to these. You wanna look at that up in the after rules. I believe it's two inches, I can't remember now. Anyway, it will allow you to use them for elevation and comfort only. We're gonna put these on and straighten around. This is what they're for. If I don't have them on, I have to lean over a little farther or I need a lower bucket. So, I set my bipod up. And you remember we were talking about in a group about the, the shot time, right? Well, there's a, a one minute setup time at a sanctioned after match and one minute per shot. Uh, so if there's two targets and two shots per target, it's going to be four minutes to shoot in one minute setup time. So you're going to set a timer for five total minutes. This count, when you sit down on this bucket, this counts as your setup time, right? So the clock should start then. So what you would do is get your gun set up on your bipod, get comfortable with it, right? Then you're fixing to range your target and see how far you think it is. You're gonna look at a little card or something you've made notes with to tell you what the elevation is. Uh, hunter class, there's no clicking, so you have to use middle dots or hash marks on the scopes. So anyway, you're gonna range your target, and if you need to adjust your bipod, and I do, we're gonna stretch the legs out a little farther. gun back on it where you put your gun every time on a bipod front to back is gonna really matter with a, a piston gun it's gonna really make a difference so you're gonna want to probably put a piece of tape on your gun or mark it whatever you got to do to make sure that you set it in the same spot every time so that you get more consistent shots so I'm gonna range my target all right I would look on my wheel and see how many yards it says that target is that I've already went through the process of marking my wheel for yardages. All right. Once you've got the yardage figured out, it's okay to go ahead and cock and load your gun. Easier said than done. Got at the target and see if we get it. It'd be a miss. Did you hear that thud? Let's see if I can get it with this one.
that's a miss too. So that target would be a miss on two of them. Now I'm gonna range my second target a little farther out. Once I've got that range, I would look on my, my note card and see how far it tells me the, the target is. So I know what to hold over, what, what mill that to hold on. That's a big fat miss. Hit that one really low. That was it. So for this lane, I would have a score of one. That's all that lane would bring. And that's pretty much how the match is going to go for me if I was to go back to hunter class. I am absolutely no threat in that class with a piston gun. Probably wouldn't be a threat to that class with any gun. So that's it. And you've already seen the resettable string target, so I'm just going to reset that one. Simple as that. And I would pick my stuff up and clear the lane for the next shooter. It's as simple as just grabbing your stuff, your gun. I don't know if you've seen this, I've got mine on this uh, converted golf bag caddy. And uh, it actually has a place to put a scorecard on it if uh, you're the scorekeeper for your lane. Anyway. That's about all there is going to be to your first match. Get your numbers on your card. Make sure you've got good numbers for your holdover. And good luck. Alright, so I showed you some of the equipment that I used to use uh, when I shot 100 glass uh, probably five years ago. And now I'm going to show you if I was to go back and do it today. I'll show you the stuff that I would do today. I'd be using a bum bag. I use an open class instead of a bucket that I used to start with. We we'll probably still use the exact same bipod. And I'm going to show you why I would switch. This would be my shooting position. My elbow wrapped around my knee. Gun barely touching my shoulder. So there's no heartbeat, as little as I can stand. Four end of the gun resting on the, the bipod. Again, I would put it, you know, I would do my, my homework and find out where it was going to work most consistent for me and I'd put a mark on it. So I had it in the same spot every time. But I'm sitting here looking down range at my 60 yard uh, target and I am rock steady on it like this. Not even, not even joking, I am rock steady. That makes a big difference when you're ranging too, is how, how steady you can you can hold is in hunter class you're only allowed uh, 16 power when I was uh, shooting hunter class five years ago you're only allowed 12 power and this is the actual scope that I had and uh, anyway the scope's giving you the information it's just if you're shaking if you're moving all over target you really can't see the clarity of the target you can't see the subtle changes uh, when you get it in focus good to know how how good you've got it ranged so this way I am rock steady. I can put my foot through it. I can actually rest the front of the bipod on my shin. I am rock steady like this. The gun is sitting here by itself. I'm not even touching it. It's steady, right? So all I want to do is make sure I got my gun level and I range my target and get down on it. It looks uncomfortable, but it really isn't. I'm hunched over a little bit. I don't do good with a natural point of aim position. I do good kind of being, you know, uncomfortable. So this would be where I would shoot from because I am rock steady on that target out there. Just like this. I believe I could hold a half inch uh, 
a half inch uh, group out there if the gun was shooting good and uh, I believe I could probably hold a half inch group out there at somewhere around 50 or 60 yards being this steady this to me is the answer I shoot my hunter class pistol like this it uh, sits on this same bipod just sits out here and the, the grip of the pistol sits on my knee just like this I also have a knee pad on right it helps to get the pistol up in the air a little bit more so I'm not bent over much and if you can imagine the stock not being here I just sit here like this and look at my pistol and I am rock steady and again with even with my pistol I can turn the gun loose and it just stays put it's it's rock steady so that would be my my choice if I was gonna go back to hunter classes to sit down on the ground in this position right here get used to it um, probably go back to using my my uh, caddy I had a small one it's easy to just set the gun over in like this plus it's got a wooden side and I use my hand to get my you know old tired bones off the ground with but anyway hope some of this comes in helpful to you and good luck in your first match Joshua all right this I want to show you it would be a, a what I call a dope card and uh, this is what I would have if I was going to shoot hunter class again using mill dots or hash marks on a scope instead of clicking uh, 10 yards would equal three mill dots 11 yards two and seven uh, two and three quarter mill dots and so on you get the idea right here right okay you'll notice something over here when we get to somewhere around 22 yards equals zero all right 34 yards equals zero there's nothing in between right that's because all those distances in between are zero mil dots that is my zero where i got my gun zeroed at and through the apex of your trajectory uh the highest point of your trajectory that's not enough difference to even worry about uh, you certainly can't hold uh, a tenth of a mil dot right so a quarter is pretty tough to guesstimate looking through the scope that that is a quarter of a mil dot and then when it gets down here you'll notice it goes all the way down to here now something else interesting 55 yards would be two mil dots now this is my actual card and these aren't my actual numbers this is just as close as i can remember i do remember several of them i remember uh 22 to 34 yards was zero i remember uh using this the setup i had that 10 yards was three mil dots and 55 yards was only two right remember how important i told you it was to have numbers for 10 yards 10 and a half yards 11 yards 11 and a half and 12 all right well you don't got to have them but there is a big difference if they move that little tiny three it's target from 10 to 11 yards or 10 to 10 and a half yards it takes away a lot of your wiggle room for making mistakes uh uh, uh um just uh not holding steady when you pull the trigger or maybe you pulled the shot just a little bit, right? The more perfect you are at those little tiny targets that are up close, uh, the better your odds are that's going to be a hit. And it's kind of sickening to miss a 10 or 10 and a half yard target. So if my if my uh, uh, yardage markings on my scope said that I was between 10 and 11, I would guess that it to be 10 and a half yards. And I would try to split the difference between three mil dots in two and three quarter i would actually try to split that difference even though i don't have it written on my card i just naturally try to split that difference so that i was that much more accurate at trying to get stay on a, a, a perfect point of aim anyway that's all